As you can see here, we're presenting the largest uh, exhibition of small arms, uh, civilian weapons, uh, defense products. Uh, you can see a lot of uh, different systems, a lot of different companies which are a part of Kalashnikov Group. UAVs, you'll see boats, you'll see a lot of really interesting new developments and it's, it's really, a lot of people say that this is the most impressive part of the whole exhibition. For the first time we're actually presenting AK-12K and AK-15K. As we all know, those are two weapons which were developed for the Ratnik program for the Russian military. AK-12 is in 5.45, AK-15 is in 7.62 by 39 and obviously we need a shorter version for special forces, for special tasks. And this is AK-12K, uh, uh, which stands for Karotki, or Kurtz in German. You can see the new magazine uh, with uh, transparent windows. You can see how much ammo is left. Now it's in uh, production already. And there are quite a few features of this weapon that make it different from the previous generation. So let's start with the flash hider. As you can see, uh, it's not really a muzzle brake. It still works as a muzzle brake, a bird cage type muzzle brake. It's more of a flash hider because obviously the priority now is on uh, low light, night operations, and you need to have a very good flash hider. So uh, you don't really have to use the thread anymore. What we have for this version is a quick detach suppressor. You just put it on, you take it off. It's very easy, there is no need to clean the thread and worry about the, the, the size of the thread. You just have a, by default, you have a very effective flash hider and you can put on a suppressor. Uh, the handguard now is free floating. You can see that the only, uh, uh, the only thing on the barrel is the uh, gas block and the front side. And uh, you can clean the gas tube from the front now. So the gas, gas tube is attached to the receiver as well as the hangar. A free-floating hangar allows, allows us to use the bipod, to use any kind of grips without any interference with the barrel harmonics, without any uh, interference with the barrel, basically. Uh, you can see the new safety, which is very ergonomic. This version has a two-shot burst option, which will be available with this gun. Uh, collapsible stock, again, very comfortable. Uh, you can make it very short because right now a lot of people like to put the stock in the middle of their chest and when you're using a vest it's really important. But also some people like their stocks long and you know, <laughs> very few, I don't think anyone complained that this stock is too short. Another feature is you can see that the front sight now is on the gas block, uh, but uh, the sight line, the sight radius is actually increased in comparison with the previous generation because now the rear sight is in the back of the receiver cover. It's an aperture side, a ghost ring, which significantly enhances the uh, accuracy. And also, you know, every person who ever had to zero an AK remembers that you need a sight tool to make any windage corrections. Not anymore, because here, on this rear side, you can just use this adjustment knob to move your, uh, to move your point of impact left or right. It's very, and you know, you don't have to carry this sight tool with you all the time which is really, really handy. So here is the standard version, AK-12. The difference between AK-12 and AK-15 is the caliber. For a long time, 545 was the only caliber Russian military used for assault rifles, but right now, uh, Russian military wants to have an option of using 762 by 39 That's why we have AK-12 and AK-15, which is identical in every feature but the caliber. The same thing with the shorter version, we talked about AK-12 uh, Kurtz, the shutter version, and we also have AK-15 Kurtz, the shutter version. So uh, basically you can see that the whole, uh, it's AK-12, it's not just a weapon, it's a whole series of weapons. You can see the RPK has very similar features in many ways. And this is the next assault rifle of the Russian military. You can see that you can use a laser device like Atpial or Anpak or whatever you would like to call it. Red dots, this is a Russian red dot which is also trialed in a Rutnik uh, program. And every other feature is uh, exactly the same with the shorter version or you know, longer version. Uh, so it really helps with uh, starting the production. One more feature is that uh, now the toolkit, uh, since we can't have it in the stock, we have it in the pistol grip. And you also have a little oil bottle. And a lot of people still want to have a cleaning rod, which you know is a good idea. So you have the cleaning rod inside the tube, inside the tube of your stock. 
So you still get all those accessories that uh, you have with the AK, uh, with the standard AK. They just look different and <laughs> they're in other places. We want to keep the same weight because uh, in our experience, especially working with some newer guns from certain manufacturers, when you go below 3.2, 3.3, even a very good shooter cannot really control the recoil. And uh, it is really, you know, I think the gold standard, something like 3.2, 3.3, especially for 7.62, by 39. If you're going lighter than that, the weapon becomes uncontrollable. That's my experience. Well, some of our viewers might be familiar with RPK-16 uh, light machine gun. Uh, at this exhibition, Army 2017, we're presenting a new version. As you can see, it has two barrels. And uh, what is happening right now, a lot of special forces, they need an effective uh, support weapon. Uh, and that they can use in CQB, that they can use in, uh, during uh, uh, any engagements in the city. And sometimes uh, the support weapon, this light machine gun, has to be very compact. So the solution is very simple. You can detach the long barrel, you can use the shorter barrel, you're still going to have the same kind of firepower, but in a very compact package. Looking at other features, you can see it's very similar to AK-12 in almost every way, which makes sense. Uh, obviously, you can use now with a free-floating handguard, you can use a uh, bipod. There is a 95-round drum magazine here. Again, you know, this is a really, that, really something we were, uh, we were making for, for a while now and um, a lot of interest, a lot of interest to this drum magazine because we had a drum magazine uh, for 7.62x39. By 545, it's something new and something really desired by almost every special unit. So as you can see, you can use optics. This is a Russian version of a, you know, a very famous optic that we all know. And uh, uh, just basically, it's a very nice light machine gun. There's a lot of interest and um, well, hopefully we'll see it in production in just a few years.